couple ways, a couple ways to do this one. Uh, and you could use common denominators, which is really all we end up doing in the end. Mm. I don't like that method, though, because it can cause confusion. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something probably you're a little bit more familiar with, and this is called cross-multiplication, okay? So with cross-multiplication, I take the crossing numerator and denominator and multiply these, all right? That would mean that I'm going to take x plus 3, and I have it in parentheses because I'm multiplying that whole numerator by 4. This should equal the other numerator and denominator cross-multiplied cross-multiplication. So 2, and then I'd multiply that completely by x minus 1. So I do need that set of parentheses there, okay? What about that 4? It's on the wrong side. No, it doesn't matter. It's still multiplication, so I can distribute from this end as well. Okay, so 4 times x, that'd be 4x's, and then 3 times 4, that'd be positive 12. So I get 4x plus 12 on the left. On the right, I got 2 times x distributed would be 2x's, and then 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2 distributed. Boom. All right, well, hey, look, not even any more fractions at this point. We're not even at the last point, but don't have to worry about those. So here we go. I'm going to do this a little bit different than last time. I'm going to do the two steps and one step because we can. And I do want my x's on the left, the numbers on the right. So the, the positive 12, the plus 12, I'm going to zero that out by subtracting 12 from both sides. So that zeroes that out just like I want. But on the right, I got negative 2 minus 12, which is negative 14. That's doable. Uh, but the 2x in purple there, it's on the wrong side. So I'm going to zero that out as well at the same time. Yes, we can do that. Remember, we're just lining these up with like terms anyways. So I just saved myself some space, maybe even some time, but at least some space. Okay. And what do you know? 2x minus 2x, that does zero out. And now we got 4x's minus 2x's. So I, that'd be another 2x's right there. Okay. Uh, so this is the final part of the equation. 2x equals negative 14. Just divide by both sides by the coefficient 2. x equals negative 7. Well, let's check. Let's check. This one should be pretty easy. Negative 7 plus 3, that would be negative 4 divided by 2. That's negative 2. Okay, so I know I get negative 2 on this left side. What about negative 7 minus 1? That's negative 8 divided by 4. That's negative 2. That may be better, too. So it checks off that it is true. Now I know that x equals negative 7. If we go back to the beginning here, what you could do is you could force the denominators to be the same. Why would you do that? Because if you do, you can get rid of the fractions. And since we all hate fractions, that's, sometimes it's the, it's the method of choice. It doesn't have to be, though. So see that denominator 2 and the de denominator 4? I can force them to be the same by just multiplying this one by 2. See, that makes it a denominator 4. But if I do that, i got to do it to the numerator as well. Right, so I don't change the value of the fraction. So that ends up being 2 times x plus 3. And then this, well, it equals what we still had up there with uh, x minus 1 over 4, like this. Okay. So now that I force the denominators to be the same, and this may look a little weird because I'm doing it a little bit different, but <laughs> I forced the denominators to be the same. I, I could have multiplied, uh, for example, uh, I guess this side by 2. I have to think about that more before I say that out loud. In any case, the, the denominators match, and so then I would have uh, 2 times x plus 3 equals now just x minus 1. Um, 